or leaves parents one last surprise in an envelope, it goes viral. There is no harder thing in this life than losing a child. A person that didn't have the time to live life is something that makes even the most hard-boiled people feel something. In most cases, the parents try to move forward, a Herculean task for sure. Most of the time, the help you can receive from friends and family is what helps you move forward. Although in today's story, we have an exception. It was the late daughter that helped do that in a very unexpected way. The name of our protagonist is Taylor Smith. Taylor was an amazing little girl that was growing up in Johnson City, Tennessee, with her family. Her two parents and her brother whom she loved very much. She was a very curious girl, always up to something, with a lot of imagination and energy to spare. Her parents were amazed by her creativity and her seemingly endless supply of positivity. She would prove once more how creative she was. The two children were getting along great, even though they were going through puberty. The parents had stable jobs and plenty of love to give to their children. Everything was going great for the Smith family, and life at the moment seemed to be nothing but smooth sailing. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Taylor started feeling a bit under the weather. In the beginning, she showed mild symptoms of the flu. She had a bit of a headache and a 37.5 fever. It wasn't the first time she was getting sick and her parents were calm about it. That being said, they decided that the best thing they could do was to get her to the hospital, just to be sure. That's what they did. They took her to the hospital and, after a few tests, the doctors came to the same conclusion that the family had before. It was just the flu. She was given some simple medication to help her get through it, but the best they could do was let the flu run its course. Taylor's parents, Ellen and Tim, felt relieved with the news. They could see it was nothing serious, but you can never be too sure. That is more true than they could believe. Taylor had already started getting better one day after. Her fever was going down and she was starting to feel better, she even regained some of her energy. It seemed like the medication was working and pretty soon she would be back to doing her favorite things without a care in the world. Unfortunately, things were about to take a turn for the worst. Suddenly, Taylor's symptoms started worsening severely. Her fever got extremely high and she was coughing a lot. It was starting to become obvious that this wasn't simple flu. Her parents decided to rush her to the hospital since they were getting more and more scared about her condition. They were afraid that she might have some complications that they cannot deal with. Unfortunately, they were right. After she got to the hospital, she was rushed into the emergency room. The doctors informed them that her situation was very serious and that they were going to do whatever they could to help her. After hours of trying to battle her symptoms, the infection won this battle. It turns out that Taylor had developed pneumonia due to the implications of the flu. On January the 5th she passed away. Her family was devastated. For many days after the event, everything they were doing was mechanical. It was like they were in a completely different dimension. A dimension that Taylor didn't exist. This couldn't be the real dimension since they were sure she was alive. How can a person that was alive a little while ago now be gone forever? It couldn't be real. After time passed, they started realizing that it was real. Their beloved Taylor wasn't with them anymore. They had to deal with this fact one way or the other. After the funeral, they didn't dare to go into her room. None of them. The memory was still too fresh. So, for many days, they ignored her room. They were afraid of what they were going to find in there. Probably everything they would see would be too painful. Everything would remind them what an amazing person Taylor was and how much potential she had in her life. This would be hard for anyone, let alone her parents. But, in the end, they realized that they couldn't ignore this room forever. They had to take a step forward. When they were ready. Finally, the day came that they mustered up the courage to go in. A few months had passed and it was time to go through Taylor's stuff. They had decided that they were going to give most of her stuff away to charity. Taylor was such a good girl that she would have been happy knowing that at least another child can get joy out of her things. In this room, Taylor had a surprise for her parents. They started going through her clothes, all of them were of no use for them anymore, so they were going to give them to children that needed them more. Then it was time for her toys, many unique toys, that Taylor enjoyed playing with. Her imagination was making a simple doll be a superhero and the dollhouse to be her hideout. All of those were going to charity. After a bit, almost nothing was left. The thing that they left for last was her pictures. She had many pictures in her room. Of various things, and some of them were of herself. That's why they couldn't find the courage to touch them. Even though a few months had passed, it was still too fresh for them to look at her. They had to do it, though. After they started opening the frames and taking the pictures out, they found something. Behind one of the pictures, there was a hidden envelope. In the beginning, they didn't know what they were looking at. It had the appearance of a formal envelope you received from the post office. But, after they started reading what was on the envelope, they soon realized what was in their hands. They immediately burst into tears, since it was proof of what an amazing girl Taylor was. It was a letter from Taylor to her future self. 
On the outside of the letter, it was saying that this letter shouldn't be opened by anyone other than her, except told otherwise by her, and not until the year 2023. That was a real dilemma. Should they respect their daughter's wish, or should they open it? They thought the tailor would want them to read it under the circumstances. So, after a bit of thinking, they decided to open it. What they found inside moved them deeply. It was a letter from the present-day tailor to her future self. Taylor was full of creative ideas, so something like that was to be expected. Her parents wanted to find out more about the child they lost, and that was a letter that was a perfect summary of who Taylor was. They read the words with haste, trying to get as much information as possible. They were going to find out stuff they didn't even know. The letter was filled with humor and Taylor's usual sash. She started by lightly chatting with her old self. Reminding her when she wrote this letter, why, etc. She doesn't lose any time and starts writing commanding her future self to do things. She starts with the thing that she finds the most important at the time that she wrote the letter. Her high school degree. She immediately congratulates her future self for graduating out of high school. She understands that there is the possibility that she didn't graduate, but she will not accept it. She writes in the letter that if she didn't graduate, she should get back to it. She needs to get that degree after all. She won't take no for an answer. Her parents were in tears while reading the words that she wrote. She asked if she has been to college yet. With that, she is more flexible. She knows that she might not want to go. She even trusts herself that if she decided to follow a different path it was probably the right choice since her reasoning is impeccable. That's a lot of self-confidence for a 12-year-old. Her parents hadn't realized she was that confident. She was right to be after all. She continues by playing more with the concept of time. Taylor reminds future Taylor that today is the birthday of Alana. She even makes funny comments because she is expecting that, by that time, Alana will be 11 years old. Tim and Ellen were crying and laughing at the same time while reading this letter. It was proof that Taylor existed. Maybe she was meant to be a comedian. Then she jumps over to another important topic of her life. And that is religion. She was asking her future self if she had prayed recently. If she had read the Bible. Even if she had, just to be sure, she orders herself to go and pray and be as close to God as possible. But all of these things that she is saying are not without reasoning. She reminds herself that God suffers for her and all of humanity. He sent his son to earth who was tortured, mocked, and crucified, even though he was sinless. He had done nothing wrong. He sacrificed himself so that people will find salvation. This was the reason that she ought to pray and she had no excuse for not doing it. Then she gives another order that shows where she got inspired for this letter. She starts asking herself about Doctor Who. The famous British TV show about time travel was something that Taylor loved passionately. She was curious if it was still on. For her, it would have been a blessing if it was still on, but even if it wasn't, she was curious at which regeneration they finished the series. All burning questions that she had. But she wanted future Taylor to do one thing for her. She told her to watch some Doctor Who. Probably this is the series that gave her the inspiration for this letter. With all the time travel concepts that this series uses, it makes sense that she would get influenced. She probably realized that writing is the best way to time travel. Her past self would travel to the future with her words in this piece of paper. A nice little loophole in the fabric of time and space. Now it's time to talk about the real stuff. She wants to know if she has her own place yet. She is wondering if she has been to college in the end. For now, at least she wants to be a lawyer. She didn't know if this was going to be accomplished or not. She just wanted to remind her future self that the past self existed as well. But the most important thing that she wrote was the next one. She wanted her children to know that she is older than the iPad. Since she knew that they might be curious and questioning everything like her, she decided to add to this envelope a drawing of the iPad so she could convince them. This was another one of the ways that she made her parents burst with laughter. They knew that she was kinda joking when she wrote stuff like that. But with her concluding sentence, she was very serious. She wrote the following well, I think that's all. But remember, it's been 10 years since I wrote this. Stuff has happened, good and bad. That's just how life works, and you have to go with it. That was the summary of who Taylor was. An amazing young little girl who was aware of how life is and even knew the way to deal with it. Just go with it. You can't fight the flow of life. Ellen and Tim had so many emotions going through them after reading this letter. On the one hand, they were happy that their daughter had left them something so beautiful to remember her by. On the other hand, they were feeling more than ever that they had lost something that they will never get back. A life that will never be replaced, no matter what anyone does. So they decided on something. They decided to share Taylor's letter. Not to get fame or to show off to the world. That wasn't what they were going for. What they wanted was to remind people of how beautiful children's minds are. That we should appreciate them since they are the better version of ourselves. 
and it worked exactly as they intended. A lot of people got inspired by the letter and, actually, wrote to the Smith family, offering them kind words of support and telling them how their story has helped them love their children even more. Ellen said that she knew that she couldn't bring her daughter back, but she was happy all these people got inspired by her, even after she was gone.